Hello everyone, welcome and thanks for watching The Market Report. This is Marcel Peschman, analyst and writer at Cointelegraph. This show debates the most pressing topics in the crypto space and it airs exclusively in the new Cointelegraph Markets and Research YouTube channel. Today's show is sponsored by XGO. On today's show first article, written by myself, we're going to analyze some data to conclude whether or not Bitcoin will ever trade at $27,000. Some analysts attribute Bitcoin's recent 21% gains to BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF filling, but other events might have fooled the cryptocurrency gains. For instance, on June 26, HSBC Bank in Hong Kong reportedly introduced its first local crypto services using three listed crypto ETFs. For those unfamiliar, the ETF is an exchange-traded product, which is basically doing a Bitcoin trading as a stock, a regular stock like Amazon, Apple, Google, Microsoft, so on regular brokers. This is very useful for mutual funds, which cannot invest directly in Bitcoin, the virtual asset. But more importantly, the US crypto regulatory environment may be improving after a period marked by enforcement actions from the SEC regulator aimed at exchanges supposedly operating as an unregistered broker securities. Just to make sure you're on the same page, the SEC filed charges against Binance and Coinbase and the chair, Gary Gensler, came out hard on altcoins which the regulator deemed as securities despite offering little guidance for the sector. On June 25, Federal Reserve Governor Michel Bowman said that policymakers are leaving substantial uncertainty on imposing new business requirements after significant investments have been made. Okay, so now the SEC has gathered opposition in the Congress and the Federal Reserve. That shows how conflicting the US government views on crypto regulations are. In that sense, it marks a 180 shift from the Operation Choke Point 2.0 where every government agency was trying to suppress the sector, that included the SEC, the CFTC, and the OCC, as well as many others. So now that we have established that the BlackRock ETF was a positive move, but not the sole reason behind Bitcoin's 21% gains, let's analyze how professional traders are positioned using Bitcoin futures and margin. The above chart shows that OKX traders' margin landing ratio bottomed at 17 on June 20, but has improved over the past four days. The movement indicates a prevalence of margin longs, as the present 24 times ratio favors bulls stablecoin landing. So the higher the indicator, the more bullish traders are. The lower the indicator means they're adding leverage short Bitcoin positions. So the higher indicator means positive or bullish. Okay, so our first indicator shows confidence being restored despite the price gain, while some distrust would be normally expected as everyone expects a pullback after a 20% or higher rally. Still, investors should analyze the Bitcoin futures long to short metric, which excludes externalities that might have solely impacted the margin markets. Now let's look at the chart and you can see that the top traders at Huobi, OKX and Binance have been increasing their longs since June 21st. So even though they might have missed the opportunity to buy ahead of the pump, they still managed to enter the wagon. You can see on all of the three charts that their long to short ratio has been increasing. So they added longs or reduced the shorts, which is bullish. So that's great news for bulls. So my conclusion from this report is bullish. There's a favorable scenario towards cryptos starting in the regulator's minds, at least in the lawmakers and the Federal Reserve. So even though the SEC continues with a harsh attitude towards cryptos, they are no longer the unisound voice. There are multiple voices inside the government right now, which is a good thing. So Bitcoin bulls should now have the upper hand to sustain 27, maybe 30,000 as a support price for the coming weeks. Now, on to the next topic, we'll cover an article by Helen Parks. ARK Invest filed for a spot Bitcoin ETF in collaboration with 21 shares long before BlackRock did. 
and its application is reportedly first in line for the SEC's approval. ARK Investment Management, a pro-Bitcoin firm funded by veteran investor Cathy Wood, is reportedly ahead in the race for a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund. Several reports suggested that BlackRock could become the first issuer of a spot Bitcoin ETF in the United States should it receive approval, but that might not be the case according to some executives and analysts. So why are they expecting the ARC to come out ahead? Simple, because ARC filed their application in April, so two months ahead of BlackRock. Meanwhile, ARC preliminary decision from the SEC is expected by August. Of course, they can postpone that by six months, then another three months, then another three months, so it can take a whole year, but ARC is ahead in the line. The truth is, the spot Bitcoin ETF has been a distant dream for the past six or seven years and nothing changed regarding the complaints from the regulator. Namely, the low market share of Coinbase and regulated trading venues and the wash trading happening on dominant stablecoin markets. So even if one assumes that the entire volume of Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, Bitstamp are done by clients instead of market makers, they are not relevant when considering Binance, OKX, Bybit and Huobi. Besides, what the regulator is claiming about stablecoins is definitely something to be considered, because there's also heavily impacting the price formation on the exchange servicing US-based clients. For instance, it is estimated that stablecoin trading on Bitcoin represents over 80% of the volume when compared to cash markets to fiat trades using US dollars, euros, and etc. So the stablecoin-based trading is very relevant for the price formation. Anyway, let's be true here with one another. There's no way to predict why BlackRock and so many asset managers decided to throw their ETF requests in a rushed manner. Where there's smoke, there's fire. So I would not advise on betting against them. The question is how much money, how much inflow can those ETF launches attract? We've already got some spot ETFs trading in Canada and Brazil, for instance, so Canada holds a mere 750 million in assets and app under management for Purpose ETF, the biggest one there. The two leading ETFs in Brazil hold combined less than $90 million. So we're talking about approximately $1 billion in each spot ETF markets outside of the United States. Of course, the US market is over 20 times larger, so there's nothing stopping those instruments to reach 20 billion in market capitalization. It might take a couple of years to reach that number, but it's quite feasible. As a comparison, Tesla's investment back in early 2021 was one and a half billion. So that's 13 times higher if the ETFs are able to capture $20 billion of inflow. Consequently, it makes sense to buy Bitcoin now if you believe that the spot-based ETF will be approved in the next year or so. Just to highlight, that's my own personal opinion, does not constitute investment advice or reflect Cointelegraph's official view. On our third and final topic for the day, we'll discuss an article written by Brian Lindrea. Riot platforms to add 33,000 Bitcoin miners ahead of the 2024 halving. The new rigs will add 7.6 exahashes per second to the firm's self-mining capacity, but won't be installed until the first quarter of 2024. Riot said it may also purchase 66,000 M56 models before the end of 2024, adding 15.3 extra hashes per second to the firm's self-mining capacity. Why the hell are Bitcoin miners adding equipment ahead of the halving by mid-2024? Well, there's only three reasons that could possibly explain that. Number one, they're expecting the mining equipment price to continue surging either by chip shortage or China halting the production of those miners. It doesn't matter. So if they expect the mining equipment cost to continue going up next year, it makes sense to buy ahead. Reason number two, they have access to energy contracts that support the Bitcoin price remaining at $30,000 despite the 50% cut on the reward incentive per block. Let's say most professional miners are paying 10 cents per dollar or 8 cents per dollar and those guys have access at 6 cents or 5 cents per dollar so a 30 to 40 percent discount versus competition so for them it's going to remain healthy even if a 50 percent cut in the subsidy happens because their competitors 
will be in the red first, so they have to shut down their machines. And the third reason explaining would be their expectation for fees. So the transaction fees increasing in the Bitcoin network to compensate for the lower block reward. This could happen regardless of the Bitcoin price move. Will they be profitable? Well, my bet is that they are confident on having lower operation cost versus competitors. So basically lower energy cost. So they are prepared to run in the red for a couple of months or quarters and even half a year to recoup later as the mining difficulty adjustment causes the competitors to shut down their machines so the difficulty goes down and increases their profitability. Again, that's exclusively my own opinion, might not reflect Contelegraph's official view. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to visit Markets Pro, the Telegraph official alerts platform. Our proprietary indicators have been giving profitable alerts for months. There's a 20% discount link in the video's description. See you!